What you are about to see may be disturbing. If true, it is absolutely disturbing. Or it could be an elaborate hoax. We have video that supposedly shows an alien being being interrogated in an S-2 facility in 1997 by the United States military. Is it a hoax or is it a psychological operation to get people to think all UFO theories are crazy? We're going to be discussing this as well as the congressional hearings that just took place this week in the United States Capitol with our special guest Todd. Coconado. There have been more than 2,000 reported cases of alien abductions since the 1950s. The National UFO Reporting Center estimates that there are about 5,000 UFO sightings reported each year in the United States alone. However, other sources estimate that the number of sightings is much higher, with some estimates as high as 20,000 a year. In 2021, the U.S. government released a report on Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon, or UAPs, that acknowledged that some UAPs cannot be explained by any known natural phenomenon. The report also said that the government is conducting a new investigation into UAPs. Recent years, whistleblowers have come out and said, we may be showing some of that testimony during this broadcast, that the United States government has aircraft of non-human origin. The question is, what should the church's response be to all of this? What does the Bible say? Is this spoken about in Bible prophecy? We're going to be talking about this and much, much more with our special guest, Todd Coconado, but we are live. We're going to be responding to your comments. We're going to be answering your questions. We want to hear from you. What do you think? Here's what I believe. The truth is out there. We are live on Encounter today, and we are so thankful to have you all with us. And we've got a special guest with us. We're going to be walking through all the breaking news that's been happening over the last week. Also, some video that has come out that is actually quite disturbing that was at one time debunked as a hoax. Now, new evidence is showing that there might be some validity to it. We're going to be talking about that, showing you the actual video of a potential alien interrogation. What does that mean for us? What is the church supposed to do? But we want to hear from you. Number one, where are you watching from? And two, with more than 20,000 reported cases of encounters with uh, uh, UFOs and aliens and even more sightings of UAPs, have you experienced anything like that? Have you seen anything like that? Let us know in the comments. We're going to be reading your comments throughout this time together. We're going to be answering your questions. But let's dive right in. I've got my special guest with me, Todd Coconado. Pastor, it's so good to have you with us. Hey, Alan, it's great to be with you. I really appreciate that you're talking about this subject matter because I can't think of anybody else in the Christian world that is. Uh, so <laughs> this is very important because this could be one of the defining uh, issues of our time, even maybe the great deception. And so I think hmm. it has to be talked about, and I'm so glad that we're going to discuss this today. So unpack that for me a little bit because I've been talking about that as well, the great deception and uh, that's what Jesus warned about in the last days more than anything else was deception. How do you think this alien UFO UAP narrative plays into that end time deception? Well, it's so interesting you ask this because I, I, I've been writing about this and taking notes. And so, you know, it's number one, there's going to be false signs and wonders. We know that. And according to, uh, to the scripture, Matthew 24, 24, uh, there's going to be uh, an attempt to distract from the gospel. We're definitely seeing that playing out right now in our society, in our world. And uh, you can look into Colossians 2.8 if you're taking notes. And then they're going to try to undermine the authority of Scripture. And that, what I think is really is the main reason they would use this, because this would in some ways essentially debunk uh, a lot of what Christians believe, you know, in, in our worldview. So even though it really won't, what they're trying to do is trying to put, like in a court case, a reasonable doubt in mm. somebody's mind to say, well, if there's all these different worlds and there's all these different civilizations, maybe they came and developed our, you know, maybe it wasn't God that created the world. Maybe it was some alien that came and seeded our planet with DNA or something, you know. So they're, they're putting together a, a reasonable doubt. And if they can do just that, then a lot of people could walk away from their faith in Jesus Christ. But what you're saying is not outlandish. Richard Dawkins, the author of The God Delusion, a prominent atheist, very respected scientist, 
Um, he has said that he believes that it certainly is possible that aliens seeded life on this planet. And I think the reason why that that has become so appealing is because it is a belief in a higher intelligence or a higher being that requires zero accountability. And that's the reason why so many religions have been founded on some sort of alien encounter, alien technology, from Islam to Mormonism to Scientology. And that's why so many more are about to explode as far as alien religions are. Are concerned, but we have we have a lot to get into during this time together. We also have with us to represent the younger generation, of course. We Somebody asked to. Evan DiDio is with us on this broadcast. What's up, as well. everybody? He's going to be reading your comments and so be nice. And, yeah, be nice, or he will delete your comments <laughs> gladly. <laughs> but make sure you share this, ladies and gentlemen, because what we're about to share with you, no one else is talking about it. Pastor Todd, why do you think it is? Was something that's so prominent now. It's being talked about in the Pentagon. Congressional right. hearings this week, we're going to show clips of. I watched hours of congressional hearings, ladies and gentlemen, so you don't have to. We're going to go through and talk about those. Why do you think pastors aren't addressing this issue when it's obviously something that's going to be used to try to stifle the faith of believers? I think it's the same reason why a lot of pastors won't talk about the book of Revelation. They're afraid to. Uh, they're mm. afraid of, of, of maybe misspeaking or, you know, um, I'm sure this happens to you, but sometimes the media will take clips of things that I talk about and uh, all of a sudden I'll get hundreds of thousands of people, you know, writing me and different things. It's pretty crazy. So uh, they, they don't want to ruffle any feathers. And unfortunately, a lot of people are just fearful of those types of things. They don't want to be labeled a conspiracy theorist. Um, so, but you know, these are conversations though, that are going to set the body of Christ up for success. We have to have them because there are going to be folks that are confused and fall into deception. And it's very important from a biblical standpoint that we address it. I wonder also, um, as we talk about this, as we get into these clips here, when we're talking about these alien encounters or UFOs or UAPs in your mind, what are the different possibilities of what people are seeing? If you could categorize them, what categories would you place these in? Well, I think uh, the first one would be there's been people that have talked about advanced technology that's been withheld from us. So yes. uh, I've, I've spoke to former military intelligence people that, you know, they don't want to tell me classified information, but they'll kind of allude to certain things. But they say that our own intelligence organizations like the CIA and others have advanced technology that's far beyond the technology that we're utilizing right now or that's been rolled out. Now, you can think about this uh, skunk works for instance, had stealth technology, you know, decades before it was rolled out publicly and we saw it really used in the in the Iraq war. Yes. So uh, I'm sure there's advanced technologies that are out there right now, uh, probably far beyond what we can even imagine. So that's one possibility is that it's just man-made advanced technology uh, that's far more advanced than what we know. Uh, the second one uh, is a little bit more controversial, but it's something that uh, you and I have spoke about where one of my mentors talked about the, the very real possibility that these could be demonic or interdimensional beings. And there's actually biblical precedent for that. If you think of Jacob's Ladder and, you know, different dimensions, different heavens that are mentioned in the Bible and the different realms that are in the heavens and whatnot, the first heaven, the second heaven. So this is a very real possibility as well, where there could be a manifestation of a demonic being that manifests in our realm of existence, in, in our world, uh, you know, and, and we know that people have uh, witnessed alien, I mean, witnessed angels. I've, I've actually believed that I've seen an angel at some point uh, in my faith, you know, so they, they can, there, there's people that suggest that angels can be in the form of humans or maybe other forms. So that's a possibility. And, uh, you know, if you think of the book of Enoch, which is not part of canonized scripture, uh, there is some uh, writings in there where supposedly these angelic beings gave certain technologies to humans, uh, the, the way to wage war, uh, makeup, uh, you know, this is kind of out there stuff, but, you know, it's not, again, it's not canonized scripture, but I just did want to mention it, that it is in the book of Enoch, there is some suggesting that these angels gave uh, advanced technologies to humans. Also, if you think about CERN, uh, you know, they've talked about opening portals and things going through these portals and, and people talking through these portals. What, what beings are talking through the portals that they're talking about? So that's another possibility. Now, let me give you the third possibility. It, there could actually be alien beings, and uh, maybe it's just not mentioned in the Bible, but there could be other beings out there that God created. So I, those are my three possibilities. Uh, I'll give you a little bit more about my opinion as we talk more about it. Yeah, this is going to be really important. And you don't even have to go to the book of Enoch. When you read through Scripture, you'll find that 
um, even the Philistines had advanced technology right. for the age that they were in. So we saw yes. uh, kind of demonically inspired societies and cultures having advanced technology in the Bronze Age, having Bronze Age having technology that that they should not have. The Tower of Babel with slime and right. mortar are able to somehow build a tower to heaven or even a portal. So it, it, you don't even have to go into the Book of Enoch, it's even true. though that certainly is fascinating. Um, Evan, I, I assume when you pop on there, you have something important to say. So, well, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, we've got we got lots of people watching. It's so good to have all of y'all. We've got Rhonda, Scott, Emmy, uh, Birdie, Glory to the King, uh, Tina, Rist, Salius, and there have been lots that agree um, that angels can manifest in the flesh. They, they've been saying things like that in the comments. Uh, also, addressing interdimensional inter beings yes. being fallen angels. It seems like uh, this this is really kind of rising in um, everyone's repertoire and in, in their tool belt where this this just information is getting easier to find. Yeah, and we're going to get into other possibilities as well as we kind of walk through these congressional hearings. I think I'm going to save the interrogation video for last, which is again. If, if if you're disturbed by things, you may not want to, you may not want to watch this. I don't know. It may not be for kids. We'll see. You make the decision. Uh, but it's interesting video that we're going to show you of a potential interrogation that took place at a military site, an S2 military site, in 1991, if I'm not mistaken. The video was then released in 97, and I think publicly in 2006, uh, there was some debate and discussion about it. But it has since then kind of re risen to the surface again appearing to be verified by some investigation. So we'll talk about that here in a second. But Evan, if we could, yeah. and Pastor Todd, is it okay if we dive right into some of these clips? Yeah, let's do it. Come on. Okay, we're going to start with this congressional hearing, by the way, that took place on July the 26, 2003, held by Congress, a hearing on UAPs and interdimensional beings. How crazy is this, that we're having a congressional hearing with a serious conversation about interdimensional beings. And we're going to start with a clip here by Graves. There were three witnesses, Ryan Graves, David Grush, and Fravor, or Fravor. I don't know how, how you pronounce his name. He seems to be the most reputable to me. But let's start with Graves, uh, something in his opening uh, statement, Evan, if we could start with that. Sure. Let's hear what he had to say. Over. In 2014, I was an F-18 Foxtrot pilot in the Navy Fighter Attack Squadron 11, the Red Rippers and I was stationed at NAS Oceana in Virginia Beach. After upgrades were made to our jet's radar systems, we began detecting unknown objects operating in our airspace. At first, we assumed they were radar errors, but soon we began to correlate the radar tracks with multiple onboard sensors, including infrared systems, eventually through visual ID. During a training mission in Warning Area Whiskey 72, 10 miles off the coast of Virginia Beach, two F-18 Super Hornets were split by a UAP. The object, described as a dark gray or a black cube inside of a clear sphere, came within 50 feet of the lead aircraft and was estimated to be 5 to 15 feet in diameter. The mission commander terminated the flight immediately and returned base. Our squadron submitted a safety report, but there was no official acknowledgement of the incident and no further mechanism to report the sightings. Soon these encounters became so frequent that air crew would discuss the risk of UAP as part of their regular pre-flight briefs. Yeah. So these, by the way, these are reputable men who have right. nothing to gain from by testifying before Congress, which, by the way, is it's it's a felony to lie before Congress. Um, and he's describing what did he say? A I've got it written down here somewhere. A black cube inside of a clear sphere that was seen right. and became commonly seen and known in these cases. Yeah, really yeah. is interesting. Yeah. There's a lot of talk of these orbs, which I'm sure you've heard about if you looked into uh, any of these crafts. Is it the, there, there's different ones. There's the cigar-shaped one. There's the orb. There's um, the tic -tac. Yeah, there's the yeah, exactly. So there's different ones that have been seen many times. So it's not just one person. And uh, a lot of times it's credible people, like you know, some police officer somewhere, or you know, people that have been uh, they're not just some person that you know would make something up. So to your point. Well, let's let's look at one of the most, I think, um, reputable witnesses uh, that has become popular for the Tic Tac incident. Let's hear what he had to say. Then we'll actually show the Tic Tac video. But let's go to Fravor, the next clip that sure. I have, Evan, and let's see what he had to say. Let's go. In 2004, I was a commanding officer of Strike Fighter Squadron 41, the world famous Black Aces. We were attached to Carrier Wing 11, stationed on board the USS Nimitz, and had begun a two-month workup cycle off the coast of California. On this day, we were scheduled for a 2v2 air-to-air -air training with the USS Princeton as our control. 
When we launched off Nimitz, my wingman was joining up. We were told that the training was going to be suspended and we were, doing, were going to proceed with real world tasking. As we proceeded to the west, the air controller was counting down the range to an object that we were going to, and we were unaware of what we were going to see when we arrived. <coughs> there, uh, the controller had told us that these objects uh, had been observed for over two weeks, coming down from over 80,000 feet, rapidly descending to 20,000 feet, hanging out for hours, and then going straight back up, for those who don't realize, above 80,000 feet is space. We arrived at the location at approximately 20,000 feet in the controller called Merge Plot, which means that our radar blip was now in the same resolution cell as the contact. As we looked around, we noticed that we saw some white water off our right side. It's important to note that the weather on this day was as close to the perfect as you could ask for off the coast of San Diego. Clear skies, light winds, calm seas, no white caps from waves. So the white water stood out in a large blue ocean. All four of us, because we were in F-18Fs, so we had pilots and Wizzo in the back seat, Looked down a small, saw a white tic-tac object with a longitudinal axis pointing north-south and moving very abruptly over the water like a ping-pong ball. There were no rotors, no rotor wash, or any sign of visible control surfaces like wings. As we started clockwise towards the object, my Wizzo and I decided to go down and take a closer look with the other aircraft staying in high cover to observe both us and the tic-tac. We proceeded around the circle about 90 degrees from the start of our descent and the object, ob object suddenly shifted its longitudinal axis, aligned it with my aircraft, and began to climb. We continued down another 270 degrees, nose low, where the tic-tac, or we consumed 270 degrees, to where the, and we went nose low to where the tic-tac would have been. Our altitude at this point was about 15,000 feet, and the tic-tac was about 12,000. As we pulled nose onto the object within about a half a mile of it, it rapidly accelerated in front of us and disappeared. Our wingmen, roughly 8,000 feet above us, lost contact also. We immediately turned back to see where the white water was at, and it was gone also. So as we started to turn back towards the east, the controller came up and said, sir, you're not going to believe this, but that thing is at your cat point, roughly 60 miles away in less than a minute. You can calculate the speed. We returned to Nimitz. We were taking off our gear. We were talking to one of my crews that was getting ready to launch. We mentioned it to them, and they went out and luckily got the video that you see, that 90-second video. What you don't see is the radar tape that was never released, and we don't know where it's at, of the active jamming that the object put on an APG-73 radar, and I can get into modes later if you're interested. What is shocking to us is that the incident was never investigated, none of my crew were ever questioned, tapes were never taken, and after a couple days it turned into a great story with friends. It wasn't until 2009 until Jay Stratton had contacted me to investigate. Unbeknownst to all, he was part of the ATIP program in the Pentagon led by Lou Elizondo. Uh, and there was an unofficial official report that came out that's now on the internet. Years later, I was contacted by the other pilot, Alex Dietrich. They mentioned Lou Elizondo, which we'll get to him here in a moment, which is uh, this authority who was involved in UFO investigations who just came out with a breaking news of what he believes these entities are. But first, we have some of that Tic Tac video that he mentioned um, and we're going to have Evan pull that up so yeah, everybody can see that, that Tic Tac video right while we now. talk about that. As you're listening to this, uh, Pastor Todd, and Evan, just pull that up whenever you have it. Yeah. What are your thoughts whenever you're, you're hearing this? Yeah, I mean, I, I've heard people say that these could possibly be advanced technology drones. Um, you know, so some type of anti-gravity uh, technology that far exceeds what we have right now with our current jets and uh, the drones that, you know, we know about. So th this could be just an advanced technology and a drone type of uh, equipment, but it's it's definitely far advanced from anything that these guys are utilizing. Yeah, there was a technology that was mentioned. I wrote it down as I was listening to the entirety of this hearing to look up later. They talked about a document uh, that apparently exists that talks about advanced space propulsion based on vacuum space-time engineering, whatever that oh. means, that could... <laughs> That could account for, which brings in another thing that we could, what we're talking about is if there are these entities, and you mentioned the possibility of, of this otherworldly thing that it, as a theory being that they're coming from another world, you and I don't believe that. We'll talk about what we do no. believe here in a moment, that if there is some sort of advanced, even demonically inspired technology, some of what we're seeing as far as these, uh, this was, I think this was discussed in this hearing, is the reverse engineering of That's right. this non-human technology that is now being used by the United States military and other deep state organizations that apparently have a budget that's even higher than the United States military. Right. Well, if you think about the black budgets, I mean, uh, in fact, this is kind of an interesting factoid, but right before 9-11 took place, um, 
you know, the uh, Secretary of State came out and said basically uh, there's billions of dollars that can't be, I think it was actually a trillion dollars that couldn't be accounted for. And they were gonna look into that and then it was like the next day or the day after 9-11 happened. So that kind of, you know, never got looked into, the story changed, the narrative changed, and that was kind of the end of that. But we know there's these black budgets and we know they're to the tune of trillions of dollars. So we have to ask ourselves from a logical standpoint, where does that money go? And, and you know, who's, who's spending these trillions and trillions of dollars? So uh, it's a real possibility that that could be used to advance this type of technology. I want to mention this, too, as we're building our narrative, because, of course, they're building their narrative, is if you think about wag the dog and, you know, just certain theories that the CIA uses, we've talked about in previous broadcasts, Operation Mockingbird. Uh, but, you know, they, they, there's predictive programming. And if you think about Star mm. Trek and all the movies that have led up to where we are right now, there, there's something in the back of everybody that's watched these films, which is pretty much most Americans and most people around the world, uh, that we have the, this already kind of uh, embedded in our zeitgeist, in our, in our minds. So when, when this then is rolled out in such an elaborate way, and we have to understand if they're going to bring out a false narrative, they're not going to do it in a cheesy way. They're going to do it in a very uh, you know, complicated – I mean, this is what's happening. So you know, very credible people, and they have the video. I always wonder too, Alan, with all of our advanced technology and videos, why is it always so grainy? And why is it that we can never really see – the object that they're talking about when you can take a satellite from space and, and look, look at like a nickel on the ground and see it clearly, but yet they have these really grainy videos whenever they're using these explanations. So that's always in my mind as well. But, uh, you know, back to my point, I think that they're, they're building a very elaborate, well thought out narrative here. And so it's not going to be cheesy. It's going to be very well, you know, they're going to, they're going to have every I dotted, every T cross. And so these hearings, they're showing that in my opinion. Yeah, no question, which I think it's important to take a look at. And I think we'll get into, actually, why the, some of the videos we see are so graining or why we don't have clear video. They talk about that in this congressional hearing. But, Evan, let's show uh, uh, Fravers' closing uh, statement there uh, before we move forward. Let me see. Go ahead and pull that up for us. Uh, which and one are you referring to? I'm seeing in the comments, by the way, those of you that are watching, if, if you're not looking, there's some reports that people are sharing of encounters that they have had uh, with – a aliens or with seeing UFOs. So take a look in those comments and see what sure. people are saying. Um, so let's see. I'll have one of our it's, editors look for that final clip. If yeah, that's it's, okay. it's the next one. It's it's uh, Fravers closing right after the Tic Tac video. Right, it's just right after that. If you have that, you just kind of throw that up there. If not, we can go to the next one. What are we What are we seeing? Because they begin to dive into that a little bit. Yes. Yeah, so the, the next one I have is how do we know it's not military? Is that okay? Sure. Throw up? Yeah. Okay. How do you know that these were not our aircraft? Some of the behaviors that we saw in a working area, we would see these objects uh, being at 0.0, .0 Mach, that's zero airspeed, over certain pieces of the ground. So what that means, just like a river, if you throw a bobber in, it's going to float downstream. These objects were staying completely stationary in Category 4 hurricane winds. These same objects would then accelerate to supersonic speeds, 1.1, 1.2 Mach. Uh, and they would do so in very erratic and, and quick behaviors that we don't, I don't have an explanation for. Okay. Have you spoken to um, commercial and military pilots um, that have seen these off of our East Coast? I have. Yeah, and anyone who knows anything says that the military pilots are seeing this all over the place. Many military pilots are seeing it everywhere. Um, uh, a lot of people are asking questions about angels, demons. And so maybe we'll take a second and kind of give our view of what we're seeing here, Pastor Todd. When we're talking yeah. about alien entities, alien encounters, close encounters of the third kind, fourth kind, in your view, what do you believe is actually taking place? I, I truly believe these are demonic beings. And I'll tell you why. I've done a lot of investigation on this. And I've spoke to certain people that have had alien encounters. Now, I want to make sure that I say this. I'm not negating the fact that several of you have mentioned that you've had these types of encounters. I do believe that you're actually having an encounter. Here's where uh, I have an opinion on this. I think that some of these people have said, they said, in the name of Jesus, get out of my room, or in the name of Jesus. And when they said the name of Jesus, the entity left, or it was gone, and it was like that. And so, you know, the Bible says demons flee in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, it's also interesting that we are now according to many biblical scholars, and I think you and I would agree with this, Alan, that we're, we're now towards the end of the age. You know, we're either in the birth pangs or maybe even in the, in the end of days here. And so 
as as the Bible explained, there, there's going to be things like this. It says, as in the days of Noah, uh, we know in the days of Noah that there were angels that were looking at the, the daughters of men and, and, and you know, there were Nephilim. And uh, it's interesting, we had to get into this conversation, how Facebook fact-checked me talking about uh, Nephilim, which is okay, really you, unbelievable. Yeah, you need to tell the audience about this. And when was this? When did you make this post? This just happened this week. So one of okay. our listeners on our radio show, they asked me what I think about the Nephilim. And I said, well, I, I believe they're real. I mean, they're in, you know, the Bible mentions them. And, you know, there's not a lot of information in the book of Genesis about Nephilim, but it does talk about the Nephilim. And I believe they were fallen angels or, you know, the Bible talks about watchers. And so, uh, and, you know, and then they supposedly uh, mated with uh, females, you know, women of, 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 from Adam, you know, uh, normal humans, and then created these giants. And then during the flood, what happened was they were supposedly wiped out from the flood. But we know that the Bible says in the end times, it's going to be like the days of Noah. Now, of course, the days of Noah were very wicked, and uh, there was a lot of other stuff going on. I mean, I can go down some rabbit holes. I think there was splicing of DNA. I think there was things that were happening at that time period that are very similar to what's happening right now. And so even though we think that some of these technologies are new, the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. So anyway, I posted just from the Bible, Alan, and I wanted to be very careful because I know that Facebook loves to fact check. Uh, I just po posted from you know the book of Genesis what it talks about with the Nephilim. And that post got fact checked. Now, you know, normally I wouldn't be so concerned about a fact check on Facebook, but I, this, this really struck an accord with me because I think if they can you know, fact check this, which is from the Bible, it's a slippery slope. They're going to start fact checking, you know, maybe uh, what the Bible says about marriage between a man and a woman. Or, I mean, we just go down the line of things that the Bible says that the current cancel culture disagrees with, you know. So uh, this is where we're at. And so I went back with. Uh, so if you have a Facebook page and you're a creator, there's actually a creator support team that you can reach out to. And so I've been going back and forth with this woman all week. And, you know, she says, well, you put up false information. I said, ma'am, I have taught at the seminary level. Uh, you know, I'm not I'm not trying to brag here, but I'm just saying, like, I I know theology. I know what the Bible says. And I also mentioned the Torah, because I think it's important to mention that this is also part of Jewish culture and Jewish faith and beliefs. And so everything I said was directly from the Torah and from the Bible. I didn't I didn't color in any lines and they still deemed it uh, false. So I just find this very concerning, Alan. And I think this is where we're going. And I really believe a lot of the AI moderation and the algorithms there, they're actually, that's a cop out so that they could say, well, you know, uh, the algorithm says that it's false, so it's false. You know, they can kind of, you know, pass that buck, if you will. But this is what's coming. And this is what believers have to understand is that biblical Christianity is the target. And everything that's being crafted here is a narrative to try to, as I said in the beginning, distract us from the gospel, false signs and wonders. It's a nature of deception, and it's trying to undermine the authority of Scripture. And this is where, as believers, we're going to have to really inquire of the Holy Spirit and ask God to speak to us and to give us revelation and understanding so that we can navigate this. Because this is why the Bible says that even the elect were deceived. Well, why? Because it was so elaborate, the hoax. It was hmm. so, um, you know, complex. And some people just don't want to, you know, they just kind of take it as face value. Well, the media says this is what's happening. The congressional hearings say this is what's happening. So this must be where we're at. And then it's going to put in, like I said earlier, that reasonable doubt. So, you know, what always got me was when these people that I've spoke to that said, when they said in the name of Jesus, the, the entity fled, that to me holds a tremendous amount of weight. Yeah, that and the common themes that are being communicated when there's when there's talks with these ailing entities is that Christianity is wrong and yes. uh, all the world religions need to come together, all the governments need to come together, and they always flee in the name of Jesus. So we have all these characteristics that show we're dealing with demonic powers, demonic entities, and when we think of demonic entities, we're not merely talking about spiritual beings referring to we're referring to the nephilim we're referring to demonic technology we're referring to these types of demonic hybrids that uh, the bible speaks of so there's a wide range that gets covered it's far more interesting you know christians often shut the conversation down and therefore they're never they're not a part of the conversation we have a far more interesting view of these things that people love talking about evan what are you what are you seeing over there in the comments yeah so janet agrees about you know once you use the name of jesus it does stop but i i heard something last night and i want want pastor you to expound on this uh, you can do a better job than I can and I also want to get uh, pastor Todd's thoughts on this um, so the book of Daniel Nebuchadnezzar has this uh, dream I believe it's a dream not a vision 
of this, stat this statue, of course, and it lays out the world empires. And the final one, I've always wondered what this was, um, is the, the feet and the ankles, the toes are iron mixed with clay. Wow. So I've always wondered what that is. I don't know why, because Daniel describes it as um, kings where their seat. Do you, you know what I'm referring to? Daniel 2.43. Yeah, Daniel 2.43. Let me, I'll look it up real fast. Yeah, while you're reading that, let me read this. Uh, this is from Nahum 2, 3 through 4. The chariots shall be with flaming torches in the day of his preparation. So this is dealing with an end time prophecy. The chariots shall rage in the streets. They shall seem like torches. They shall run like lightnings. And that's in Nahum chapter 2. Then in the last days, there'll be these fiery chariots like lightning going through the sky. Do you have that verse there from Daniel 2.43? Yeah, two four, Daniel 2.43 says, And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. Isn't that, isn't that fascinating? They shall mingle themselves. If so, if they are mingling themselves with the seed of men, who is they? Obviously, they're right. not men. What are your thoughts yep. on that, Pastor Todd? I think it's absolutely true. You, you raise an amazing point, and the fact is, is that yes, the origin may be a demonic being, but if it's like the days of Noah, certainly could they not once again mate with humans or have? We don't know what's going on behind the scenes. You know, it, it's interesting how these world governments seem to be in lockstep. In fact, they use the term lockstep, and and there's uh, definitely an agenda going on, whether it's the World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab, or. Yuval Noah Harari, which, by the way, all of this is culminating at the same time. It's so amazing that while they're saying all these things, this is being rolled out. And let me just add another talking point, which I think is important. There's some people that are suggesting that some of the geoengineering that's taking place in our atmosphere, which is very suspect, and now they're admitting openly that this is happening after many years saying it was a conspiracy. You can look up geoengineering. It's readily available. And, and they're saying that it, it would actually be better to project now with some type of holographic technology. Wow, wait a minute. Hmm. So why, why would they be preparing the skies for this? Well, you know, you can look up uh, Project, Project Bluebeam. Blue Beam. It's actually, it's been talked about for a long time. Uh, and, you know, we've seen a couple of test cases. You can look over the skies of China where there's actually been cityscapes that have been shown and the people were looking in Marvel trying to figure out what was going on in the sky. Um, every year we're seeing like on the 4th of July, for instance, better drone technology, uh, different types of holo you know, holographs now being used uh, to where it's so realistic, Alan, at this point that it's almost hard to tell reality from, you know, from a hologram. So th I'm this just is realizing, though, by the way, I'm just realizing as you say this, I'm, uh, the Spider-Man movie came out where Mysterio um, was this character who created through drones this That's entire right. fictional narrative, which is based on, I think you pulled it up there, Evan, Project yeah. Blue Beam. If you have that there, for those who don't know, so this one is geoengineering. Working area. Oh, what is, was, let me fix that. Yeah. I'll look up Project Blue Book right now. Yeah, well, Blue Book is the, the government's Blue research Beam. into UFOs from the, I believe it was the 40s into the 60s. Blue Beam, if I'm not mistaken, Pastor Todd, was in the 90s where a Canadian came out and he talked about how the government is conspiring these, or excuse me, world powers are conspiring right. to create technology where they will simulate the second coming, in a sense, uh, through yes. projections in the sky and deceive the nations. Yes, or an alien invasion. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, where they could use maybe a hybrid of some some of these real advanced craft that they have uh, mixed with holographs, you know, and and just create. I mean, think about World War of the Worlds. Uh, what was it? H.G. Uh, Wells or, you know, b back in the day, it was a radio broadcast that went out. And even though it was not a real uh, depiction of what was actually happening, so many people thought it really was happening. In fact, it caused some 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 of a chaos in society until they finally realized it was actually just a radio uh, broadcast about you know a fictional event rather than a real event because so many people thought, oh my gosh, this is actually happening. That was decades and decades ago. That's Imagine exactly what right. could happen now, right? That's exactly right. It says here the first step in Project Bluebeam would be would involve the manufacture of artificially created earthquakes. In strategic oh. locations around the world, these earthquakes would, according to the conspirators' hoaxes, unearth artifacts indicating that the religious doctrines of all nations have been misunderstood for centuries, thus discrediting all religions. So the first step is for there to be some sort of natural disaster that would unearth 
evidence that all of the world religions are wrong. And then they would begin to bring in what you're talking about, these, this, this mass deception, which Project Bluebeam is a far out theory, which is wild until you, and the only thing that really kind of makes you wonder is the gentleman who helped publish this information uh, was summarily arrested and then he was yeah. released and 24 hours within his release, he died of a heart attack. Really is interesting. What a surprise. Yeah. Yeah. Well, exactly. And, uh, you know, I just, if you think about, you got to kind of connect some dots here because there's a, there's a bunch of different things happening at once. And if you look at them individually, it really doesn't make much sense. But when you have the man that they're calling the prophet, I'm talking guys like Barack Obama that call Yavar No Harari the prophet. And he's out there saying that the world religions are going to be upended, that there, there's going to be new religions that are formed through the advancement of AI and kind of this new uh, fourth industrial revolution that we're walking into. Well, simultaneously, these other things are happening. So individually, they might just kind of be like their own thing. But you think about this hearing, you think about what Yavarno Harari is saying, then you look at Project Bluebeam. It all kind of goes together, Alan, you know? Yeah, and it is it is coming together. This is why Christians need to be informed. This is why, like all of you that are watching this right now, you're commenting, you're engaged, you like this. That's helping get the word out. You got to share it as well. You got to hit the share button and get this on as many platforms as possible. Because I can promise you, preachers need to know that men and women will share this information. So share it and stand in faith with us. And if you haven't already been to EncounterToday.com, bookmark EncounterToday.com because in the next couple of weeks, there's going to be an entire transformation where we're going to provide a one-stop shop for you to get access to all of this news and this information. Let's take a look at the next clip. And again, we're about to show video of a what has been purported to be a, an interrogation of an alien entity. And we're gonna we're gonna show that here coming up That's soon. That's gonna be cool. But let's, we have, let's keep by the way, we have that favor clip now. If you want to go ahead and show that one, yeah, go ahead and show that. Pull right. that up for let's us. Go what for concerns it. me is that there's no oversight from our elected officials on anything associated with our government processing or working on craft. Uh, believe not from this world. This issue is not a full public disclosure that can undermine national security, but it is about ensuring that our system of checks and balances works across all work done in the government using taxpayer funds. Relative to government programs, even unacknowledged WAVE programs, have some level of oversight by the appropriate committee members in the House and Senate. And this work that is said to be occurring from whistleblower testimonies should not be exempt. In closing, I would like to say that the Tic Tac object we engaged in 2004 was far superior to anything that we had on time, have today, or are looking to develop in the next 10 years. If we in fact have programs that possess this technology and needs to have oversight from those people that the citizens of this great country elected in office to represent what is best for the United States and best for the citizens, I thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Very, very serious. This is the reason why they're coming out. And people are asking questions like, or saying things like, this is a distraction and we need to focus on the gospel. That's why we're doing this. So what we're doing at the beginning of this is we're, se we're showing you what people are saying. And then yes. we're going to bring you back to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because uh, Pastor Todd, they asked the question, you know, is this, are they UFOs? Is it advanced technology? Is it reverse engineering? Is it a psychological operation? Is it real? Is it fake? And the answer to that question is probably yes. I was just going to say it's yes, exactly. <laughs> All of the above. You know, it, it's, it's, it, my view is that they are running a psychological operation. I, I do believe there's more to this. I do think that there's some demonic uh, entities involved. I do think that, you know, like you said, all those factors are kind of a part of it, you know, and, and why, why did they spend so much money on CERN? I mean, what it's, the, I always bring it back to that because it's like, they're looking for the God particle. Supposedly they put the goddess it was Shiva out uh, in front, which is the goddess of destruction. Very, very weird. And then the scientists from there are saying that, look, we're opening these portals and we don't really know what's going to come through. What, what, what you know that that was like in the beginning i mean what what's happened since then you know and, and then all of a sudden all this is coming out so i think they're talking to entities i think they're talking to demonic beings as the hour grows late and let's just be honest this is what the days of noah looked like this is what yes. was going on and that's why as christians we have to be spiritually astute and uh, i do believe it is a distraction we've got to be in the secret place we've got to be well read in scripture there's so many different distractions out there whether it's false prophecies or a false alien invasion you know and so i know we'll talk a little bit more about that so oh, yeah okay well, i want to ask a question what is the god particle you mentioned just now i think in well, correlation with cern what, what they're suggesting it is is this this particle that they can't really identify that kind of holds everything together it's kind mm -hmm. of like the glue if you will uh, and so, you know, they've been trying to figure this out. They're trying to reenact 
the Big Bang, what they, you know, they say is the, the, which came out of nowhere, you know, something came out of nothing. Um, so they're trying to reenact that there. And there's this, this particle that they can't quite figure out what it is. And so they've kind of labeled it like the X particle or the God particle. But uh, if they can figure this out, then it's going to make a lot more sense uh, with a lot of different, uh, you know, the, the building blocks of humanity, for lack of a better term. That's really interesting to me, because when you look at the, um, the foundation of a cell or of an atom, we can't recreate that necessarily right. because we don't have the information. Like if you look at a cell, it can reproduce itself. And that in itself uh, destroys evolution because evolution says these things came to be, but it requires an information database. So are, where are they getting this information from? Mm -hmm. I think that's the question. Yeah, information so. that we in our advanced technological age do not have and cannot replicate. Um, let's kind of go through some of these in, in quick succession so we can get... Do you have the uh, what are we seeing clip or do we need to go to injuries? Uh, we can do either one. Let's, let's do what are we seeing first and then we'll go to injuries that are being reported. Listen to this. Yes, uh, the objects that are being seen by commercial pilots are uh, performing maneuvers that are unexplainable due to our current understanding of our technology and our capabilities as a country. And that applies for the military as well. Mr. 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 Ferrer? Yeah, I concur with that. We have nothing that can stop in midair and go the other direction, nor do we have anything that can, like in our situation, come down from space, hang out for three hours, and go back up. Thank you. My last question, and, so, and sometimes you, I know that some, you have also said some of these answers in the past, but we're trying to get them on the public record as well, which is really important. Mr. Gresh, finally, do you believe that our government is in possession of UAPs? Uh, absolutely, based on interviewing uh, over 40 witnesses over four years. And, and, and where? I know the exact locations, and, and those locations were provided to the Inspector General and some of which to the Intelligence Committees. I actually had the people with the first-hand knowledge um, provide a protected disclosure to the Inspector General. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so this is, this is serious. Chairman uh, Grothman called out the government for a lack of transparency in this area. Uh, Representative Burchett said this is about transparency. We can't trust a government that doesn't trust its people. And that's really a big part of what we're, what we're dealing with in America today on a broad host of issues. But real quick, let's, let's, let's look at the video about injuries. Sure. And uh, then we'll get Pastor Todd's reaction. Um, been aggressive, been um, hostile to in your reports? Uh, I know of multiple colleagues of mine that got physically injured. And uh, the activity, and I got to by by UAPs or by by people within the the federal government. Both. Okay, okay. Yeah. so there has been activity by by alien or non non human technology and or beings that has caused harm to humans. Uh, I can't get into the specifics in a, an open environment, but at least the activity that I personally witnessed, and I have to be very careful here, because uh, you don't, you know, they tell you never to acknowledge tradecraft, right? So what I personally witnessed myself and my wife was very disturbing. Well, what I think is disturbing is wearing an orange band watch when you're testifying before a Senate, but um, that, that affected his credibility in my mind just a little bit, but it is a very, very serious accusation. And someone wrote in the comments just now, it's all about fear. And I think that's exactly right. That's why we need to discuss this and let people know greater is he that is in you than he that is yes. in the world. You have authority over these things. What's your reaction to t hearing about injuries that are taking place through uh, encounters with these alien entities, as well as injuries by encountering government officials who were trying to cover it up. Yeah, well, neither surprises me. You know, I've been involved in deliverance ministry for many years and uh, well, before it was even a subject, you know, and uh, people talk about incubus and succubus and demonic entities in their sleep that have been extremely violent. And um, so demonic tends to be violent. So that would actually uh, check, a, check another box as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and, you know, the government trying to hide something. Well, we know that's going on. Uh, so, you know, it doesn't surprise me in the least bit. Uh, you know, look, when you are over the target, Target, you get the most flack. And I'm going to tell you something right now. When you yeah. have a, a discussion about these types of things, 
you know, that's why there's another reason why pastors aren't out there speaking, because you got to pray for us. I mean, there's spiritual warfare that's involved in discussing this. And that's because uh, we're really over the target on a major area of deception and something that they're trying to use to really upend uh, biblical Christianity and, and the way that our society structured. You know, this is a whole introduction of another thought process. And we have to understand what this means. There's, there's, you know, people talk about a postmodern culture and a, you know, culture that's now beyond the biblical, uh, you know, foundations of our nation that we're no longer a Christian nation. These are all part of that. If they can upend the narrative, if they can put in reasonable doubt, if they can put fear, as somebody mentioned, very, very smart. You know, what place does fear have with love? Perfect love casts out fear. We know that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. And so we have to, as Christians, again inquire of the Holy Spirit. We've got to hear the voice of the Lord. We have to, we have to walk in discernment. We may not fully understand because we might not have all the facts and our finite human comprehension, but what we do have is the guidance of the Holy Spirit that will give us an inkling, an unction that will tell us this is false. Yeah. Uh, beware. You know, and that's what we're going to have to be really reliant on that, Alan and Evan. And this is going to be, as we go forward, from this point on, we have to have discernment and we have to inquire of the Holy Spirit because there is going to be elaborate deception. And that's what we're now seeing, whether it's the advancement of AI and technology, whether it's different narratives that are being rolled out. All these things are all trying to push us away from biblical Christianity. Yeah, and that's the reason why they're going to try to silence voices that are actually addressing these issues, which is why you need to check out Pastor Todd's website and connect with him, get on his mailing list. Uh, at Encounter Today, we're doing things that can't be censored, like our app. If you haven't already downloaded the Encounter Today app, get it so that we can always stay in touch with you. We can always send a push notification and notify you because that's an uncensored, one of our many uncensored platforms that we want you to stay connected with us on. So let's let's look at, let's start diving in now into something that was very interesting. Uh, Representative Matt Gates. Um, yes. He sees, he, he has, he he's called into a place in Florida or he's told about a place in Florida where there was an encounter and experience by some um, um, military uh, men. And he goes in and he's not allowed access into them. And he forces his way essentially in through his credentials and gets access to see an image, a classified image that he talks a little bit about here. Let's take a look at this. The image was of something that I am not able to attach to any human capability, either from the United States or from any of our adversaries. And I'm somewhat informed on the matter, having served on the Armed Services Committee for seven years, having served on the committee that oversees DARPA and advanced technologies for several years. Um, when we spoke with the flight crew, and when he showed us the photo that he'd taken, I asked why the video wasn't engaged, why we didn't have a FLIR system that worked. Here's what he said. They were out on a test mission that day over the Gulf of Mexico, and when you're on a test mission, you're supposed to have clear airspace, not supposed to be anything that shows up. And they saw a sequence of four craft in a clear diamond formation for which there is uh, a radar sequence that I and I alone have observed in the United States Congress. One of the pilots goes to check out that diamond formation and sees a large floating, what I can only describe as an orb, Again, like I said, not of any human capability that I'm, that I'm aware of. And when he approached, he said that his radar went down, he said that his FLIR system malfunctioned, and that he had to manually take this image um, from one of the lenses, and it was not automatic, automated uh, in collection, as you would typically see in a test mission. This is a sitting elected official in a congressional hearing testifying to seeing an image that he can attest to n no technology that he is he is aware of. Yeah. I, I've met Matt Gates. I think he's a very reputable man. Uh, I admire him. I think he's been an outspoken voice of truth in our Congress. And so uh, for him to say that, that definitely holds a lot of weight. Um, you know, I, I, I don't think that what he's saying to his knowledge is false. I think he's seen some type of image and, you know, uh, we don't know what the image is, but uh, it could very well be a Nephilim. You know, there's a story. Let me tell you this. There's a story um, out of Iraq. I don't know if you heard this uh, during the Gulf War yeah. uh, where some soldiers are suggesting 
that they went to uh, an area where they had actually encountered a giant. Uh, I don't know if you've heard this. Now, you know, again, um, you know, it is what it is. Uh, This is what they're claiming. Uh, But they say that they've encountered and they say that when they were around this being, uh, and I don't know if it was dead or alive, but they're saying that they were having issues with, you know, their mind was like being uh, messed with. They said they were they were having a real hard time, like headaches and couldn't think clearly. And so um, some people suggest that this is actually one of the reasons they went into Iraq, um, mm-hmm. you know, and they talk about Gilgamesh, you know. Yeah. And uh, so it's a, it's an interesting thing. Have you heard this story, Alan? I have heard that story. I've actually heard secondhand testimony of someone who spoke with an operator on the ground who I trust, who I know to be 100% true and honest. He said he knows the gentleman, spoke with him, and said um, they were actually doing operations in there trying to discover these things, uncover these things. So exactly what you're talking about, I've heard um, secondhand information about it that I deem to be reliable. Now, let me, let me uh, exactly, and I want to make everybody understand, this is just uh, spe- speculatory. We're not saying this is absolute, but here's the deal. Uh, just let, hypothetically, let's think about this. Let's say they were to find some being that was a Nephilim. Okay, let's just say, okay, if they were able to grab the DNA from that creature and then replicate it, uh, or splice it or, mm-hmm. you know, there, we do know there's DNA editing technology that's out. They talk about designer babies and things that, you know, are very possible in today's world. Again, this is hypothetical, but think of the power that a country would have when you talk about super soldiers in China and different things like that. Think about the power that a country would have if they possess such technology or such DNA. Think about that. DNA enhancement splicing in combination with the transhumanism of, uh, adding technology to enhance someone's abilities, all of these things are converging at the same time. Which uh, I think one of the one of the breaking reports that have come out recently is that uh, a lot of these programs are being exposed, and it's kind of like a shell game because it'll be exposed, and the the, the black, these black sites will move to another site. Uh, but Project Sabre uh, has been has been kind of outed, and it is synthetic. Uh, astral, biological, extraterrestrial races. It is it is a study of these. It's interesting. Synthetic, astral, biological, extraterrestrial races. Synthetic meaning there's some sort of technology involved as well. Some people believe that a lot of these grays and a lot of these uh, aliens that people are encounter are just kind of um, synthetic, manufactured bodies that these entities inhabit. You're smiling as if you've you've. Well, it's I'm just thinking about this viral video on the airplane with this woman, you know, where she's saying some synthetic being. And there was a second one, too, where another guy. I don't know if you heard about this in China. At the same time. (laughs) So, you know, again, just total, total speculation and hypothetical. But, you know, think about the advanced technology that's already out there. I mean, we look at Tesla and the Tesla bots and, you know, some of the, the humanoidic type bots that are now being rolled out. Uh, is it really that far-fetched to think with all these different technologies that there could be synthetic beings out there, according to what you're saying? And I'm sure everyone has heard about the woman that he's referencing who freaks out on a plane and says the person she's sitting next to is not real, which which is interesting in and of itself When until when you get the next report, which is on the other side of the world, you have a guy who's trying to get off of the plane, I think while it's in midair, because yes. he's sitting next to someone who is not real. <laughs> It's just weird, it's just weird stuff, man. Go ahead, Evan. Could be. <laughs> so speaking of Saber, I don't know if uh, Disney has a new show out. Um, I forgot what it's called. Let me see. It's uh, Nick Fury, Pastor, what's it called again? Oh, so Secret Invasion. Secret Invasion. Nick Fury's space station is called Saber. Wow. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. It's like they're telling us. And, and, and it, don't act as though... Uh, the government is not in cooperation with some of the most powerful corporations on the planet, um, partnering with them to to make these things uh, possible. So uh, another thing that came out during this congressional hearing is that Graves mentioned he testified that 95% of UAPs he believed go, goes in the military unreported. And then there was talk of non-human biologics, non-human biologics. Let's take a look at at this clip. If you believe we have crashed craft, uh, stated earlier, do we have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft? As I've stated publicly already in my News Nation interview, uh, biologics came with some of these recoveries. What? Yeah. Um, were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? 
non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to that are currently still on the program. And was this documentary evidence, this video, photos, eyewitness, like how would that be determined? The specific documentation I would have to talk to you in a skiff about. Non-human biologics, and they're speaking of non uh, uh, craft of non-human origin. It's interesting that they're now changing the language from extraterrestrial right. to non-human. He was asked about that, and he said, because I wanted to be open to all possibilities. And uh, I, I think, I think it's, the narrative is going to start to turn. Yeah, add it to the gender list, right? And that, yeah. we have another gender, alien. Now it's another another gender. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you know, it, I, the, there's a lot of coded words being said in that in that hearing. You know, a lot yeah. of coded words, uh, a lot of alluding to a lot of different things. And uh, you know, it's just it, the timing is just to me so strange. I mean, it's like when you have all these things going on in the news cycle with the Biden family and everything. Hey, let's roll out another. Uh, alien major video. alien story, you know what I'm saying? It's uh, yeah. it's just very suspect. Weird which yeah. which brings us now to the alien interrogation video that's supposedly recorded. And I think Evan, you can play that because there's no sound with it. Correct. I think you can yeah. play it. And Pastor Todd and I can kind of discuss it. Wrong one. Um, yeah, that's that's me. That's not an alien <laughs> interrogation. I hope not. Uh, All right. Yeah. So go. get that going, and so people can take a look at this. This was filmed in 1991. I believe it was first released or people started seeing it in 1996. Pastor Todd, you may have information about this that I don't have. And then in 2006, it kind of resurfaced and it was supposedly debunked at that time when they had, uh, let me take a look here at my notes. They had, um, it was released on the internet in 2006 and quickly went viral, immediately attacked because it was released by a UFO conspiracy theorist without any corroborating F- evidence. In 2007, a team of experts at the University of California, Berkeley, said it was a hoax. But new evidence has come out where an investigator, I believe his name is John Stewart, not from The Daily Show, uh, investigator came out and he went in and found the people in this video and did what he can to corroborate it. And it seems to kind of get some new life right now um do you know what we're looking at here pastor todd do you know what we're seeing here well i remember this i remember when it first rolled out you know people were sending it to me i remember there was quite a buzz around it and then i remember when they said it was debunked so it's just interesting that this video has come back up again again though let's look at the optics here you know very hard to see the image you know Mm -hmm. uh it's it's i'd love to see the forensics on this and kind of understand a little bit more about this video because if they have something, okay, this is supposedly in what, I don't know if it's 2001 or when it was when they rolled this out in the 90s, but regardless, the technology at that point was far advanced from the what we're seeing. I mean, they could have just shown the video of like, you know, how they see you and me right now. Yeah. I'm not saying it, was, it would be in 4K, but, you know, it would be in, uh, you know, at least enough quality to see a real good image. Well, this is very, you know, it's very black and dark and you just kind of see the head, but uh, you know, it's to me, it's very dark and demonic, uh, you know, yeah. from what I'm yeah. Even even if it's used, even if it's fake and used as a tool of deception, here you see the entity apparently aspirating or, or coughing or it, it wasn't. Yeah, mouth opening. It, it, was, it was injured, and then medical professionals come in and attempt to um, aid the entity. And it, it when you say it's disturbing, Pastor Todd, it really is, whether it's real or whether it's not, because what we're looking at is an agenda being pushed. Of course, you know when this starts, when this part starts being analyzed, it's interesting that um, this is beyond any CGI that we had in 1991. Right. And they're they're trying to probably had to have been practical if it is fake. Yeah. Fascinating. Of course, my first reaction in all these things is, well, it's obviously fake. I mean, I'm I'm a I'm a skeptic at heart and a realist at heart. Uh, but it's interesting that it's now resurfacing in the midst of all of this um, that's going on right now. So that's that's the news that's out. John Stewart has done the investigations into that video and says that he believes it's real and verified that he's those two physicians, he's identified them apparently and reached out to them and made some kind of contact. Um, but whether it's true or not, do you think it's do you think it's a psychological operation and to what end? I think there's definitely an element of that. And I think the end is that they would like to upend biblical Christianity and the Christian worldview and really change. And, you know, it goes in line with every other, you know, I always say, go to their websites, look at the agenda, look what 
World Economic Forum is talking about. Look what you know, Varno Harari is talking about. Look at what UN Agenda 2030 is talking about. What are the goals and where are they trying to take us and what needs to happen in order for these things to happen? There needs to be major events. So I always look at the major events on the timeline, like a 9-11 type of event or you know something along the lines of that caliber. And so this would be, if you think about it, one of the greatest events in world history if they if this actually if they say hey you know there's aliens you know here they are we have them we're in possession of their technology uh we're in possession of beings you know and so uh th this is one of those game changers that would uh, the the repercussions would reverberate throughout every society on earth and i remember reagan said you know imagine if there was an unearthly threat you know all of a sudden all the the issues in the world would seem meaningless or not as big, in other words, what he was saying, and we would come together. Well, what are they trying to do, Alan? What are they trying to do? They're trying yeah. to bring together into a one world global structure. So, uh, you know, cue the aliens, right? I mean, yeah. it's just to me, because of all the different research and from the biblical perspective and from the unction of the spirit, to me, I feel like it's a massive psychological operation that, you know, there is reality in there, but it's demonic. And uh, you know, Christians have to really hold to our faith and not be distracted, not get fear, fearful, you know, not allow that to take root and really get into the word of God and, and go deeper and closer with the Lord than you've ever gone before. And, and just God is real. This is the reality of our world. Mm -hmm. and when we understand that and we have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ, where we wake up every day and we have an active prayer life and we're in his word, this is what's going to set us up for success. And we're not going to be, what does the Bible say? Do not be conformed to the things of this world, but what be transformed by the renewing of our mind. We have to die to our flesh daily and have a renewed mind that's a spirit led mind from the Holy Spirit of living God and everything that we see, there are going to be things that are going to come out in the next few years. They're going to be so mind boggling that unless we have a strong relationship with the Lord, we're going to be deceived. And this so is, this is yeah. what I think. Yeah, go ahead. This is why the helmet of salvation is so key. Come on. The helmet of salvation and what I'm trying to, I've been screaming at the top of my lungs for the last few years. Everybody thinks that has to do with salvation, you being born again. If you read First Thessalonians chapter 5, Paul calls it the helmet of the hope of salvation, that there's something that's going to protect your mind. By the way, Paul would not tell believers that to put on salvation. If, you, if, it's, if it's dealing with your eternal regeneration and, and the atoning work of Christ, that's already taken care of. You don't put it on. Um, he's talking about the hope of salvation, the anticipation of the Lord's return, and the understanding of the hour in which we're living in that will guard your mind from the end time deception. And that's why that's how you're going to stay guarded. Evan's going to get to some questions here in a second. But first, yeah, if I could, go while, while we've got time, if you have a question, put four question marks before and after your comment. That way I can easily spot it because we got a couple hundred people here in this chat that are shooting in lots of comments. So add those four question marks. Also, Pastor Jackie Duvall is on. Come on, Jackie. <laughs> Jackie, good to see you. We should have <laughs> Jackie involved in this, in this podcast. Yeah, be talking about it. She's very anointed and, and definitely understands what's going on. Oh, no, she's got her finger on the pulse of what's going on. And she just sits kind of quietly, you know, and then she's got this, there's this fire on the inside of her. Fire, and man, the enemy's going to use her in these last days to raise up a generation who'll be able to break free from this deception. 68% of Americans believe the government is hiding information about U UAPs. This is a tipping point, 68%. Half of Americans believes the government's doing a bad job with UAP reports. Obviously, they don't know the government, I think. If that question was posed properly, be 100% of Americans doing a bad job with fill in the blank. <laughs> but Evan, what kind of what kind of comments and questions are we getting? Yeah, no. let me pull it up real fast. All right. Well, y'all can't see me. That would help. All right. So Jacob asks, have you ever had an encounter with an NHI? And I'm not exactly sure what NHI stands for. Do either of you know? Non-human entity. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's how I got saved. But that's a, that's another story <laughs> altogether. Because when when, when you when you look at the reports of close encounters of the fourth kind, and there was a movie made about it, which was based off of actual events in Alaska that took place, where where an, a community was racked by uh, these experiences. If you know anything about demon possession, they align one hundred percent. The traits of those who encounter demonic powers and who are possessed by demons are exactly in line with those who claim to have right. had alien encounters. Pastor Todd, has that been your experience? 
Yes, it has. And I had a, a, an encounter with the Holy Spirit of living God. When I died, I got stabbed nine times and the Lord spared my life. So to answer that question, I have as well with the God of heaven and earth. And that's why I know he's real, you know, and he said, go and make sure you let everyone know that I'm real, you know, so that's what I'm here to do. And uh, I'm on fire for him. I love him. And to your point, uh, Alan, you know, look, uh, that's what I'm trying to say is that if we can equip you today, if you have one of these encounters and you call upon the name of the Lord, what the Bible says is absolutely true. Those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, will be saved. And so you you use the name of Jesus, Yeshua. Use the name of the Most High God of heaven and earth, and these demons will flee. And that's what they don't want you to know. That's so powerful. And if you think of the word extraterrestrial and alien encounters, extraterrestrial means not of this world. I did a sermon recently on this subject. It's on our, on our Encounter Today YouTube channel where in the end we took kind of a twist and a turn and we went through several scriptures that say that we are not of this world, that That's we right. are actually the aliens and there needs to be more close encounters with us, with believers in this yes. world. And th we're going to turn this thing around. And that's what we want you to know. The most important verse about the Antichrist and the spirit of this age, the most important revelation that you can get about the Antichrist and the spirit of this age is found in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4 that says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You have authority in the name of Jesus to cast these things out. You have dominion. And if you are not a believer, you do not have that authority. So let me make this plea to you right now. This is the moment. This is the time to give your life to Jesus. The yes. deception is increasing. It is rampant. And unless you have the helmet of salvation, unless you know the Lord Jesus Christ, unless you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you will not be ready for the hour we're living in and you will be deceived. So would you pray right now? Would you ask the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive you of all your sins? Confess that you're a sinner. Confess that you need him and ask him to wash you with his blood and trust in his resurrection power. And you can be born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed by the word of God, meaning that more powerful than any Nephilim, you have power from heaven because you've been born of him. Blessed be the name of God forever. And if you pray that prayer, let us know. We want to stand in faith with you. Let us know in the comments. Pastor Todd, is there anything you want to add to what we've just talked about here today? Anything you want well, to say to close us up? I'm fired up right now after that, let me tell you, because when you make that decision, it's the biggest, most important decision you'll ever make here on this planet. I mean that with all my heart. And, you know, look, we're only passing through. You got to think about this. Like the Apostle Paul said, he wrote, was it Philippians from prison? I mean, you know, and, and yet how excited was he in prison to talk about the ways of God? Because he knows that exactly what you said, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. And we're passing through, and we're going to rule and reign with, for all eternity with Jesus Christ. Our name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life when we accept him as our Lord and our Savior. And so that is the most important thing. And I know some folks were saying during the broadcast, you know, don't why you talk about these things because it's fearful. But I think what this does, though, is it drives folks back to the cross, back to the blood of Jesus, yes. back to the word of God, which is ultimate truth. And that's the summation of this entire discussion is the fact that we have victory. We're walking from a position of strength in Jesus Christ. We're, we're on the winning team. And so mm. we've got to act like winners. And I'm telling you right now, watch, watch for this. In the, in the future, they're going to censor broadcasts like this, just like they did during the C-19 era, because they're not going to want this information out there. Why? Because this will set you free. The truth sets the captive free, and there's power in the name of Jesus, and they don't want you to know that. Come on. The truth is out there, and the truth shall set you free. And it's found in the revelation of Jesus Christ. We have more information we want to give you about this. In fact, we're so passionate about getting this information in your hand. If you go to EncounterToday.com and you click on Special Offer, we're going to send you a book that's going to help equip you for these last days for a gift of any size. Any size, whatever you have, whatever you can do, we just want to get it into your hands. So pray about what you would donate, what you would do. Uh, but there's a special offer right now that's going to equip you to be victorious in these last days. We have several special offers there. You can pick which one you'd like to take advantage of to equip you. But again, it's just for a gift of any size to be a blessing to you. That's an EncounterToday.com. The link is in the description. Pastor Todd Coconado, thank you so much for being with us. Hey, on great discussion. Today. I think you're the only guy I could probably have this discussion with. Maybe Joseph <laughs> Z and you. That's about That's it. right. Really Joseph cool. Z was no. going to be with us. We're going to do a separate conversation with him. He had something come up. Uh, but there's some yes. amazing voices out there. And we're going to gather them together. 
We're going to gather them together in Jesus' name, create a coalition of people who are ready to confront these controversial issues with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Evan, thank you for joining us. All of you who are part of of this broadcast, commenting, share this message right now, and we'll see you next time right here on Encounter Today.